Welcome to another Women Lead TV show brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Beauchamp, your host for Crossing Bridges, where we'll discuss challenges that women in business face, obstacles that they encountered, and lessons that they learned to help them get from one side of the bridge to the other. And today I am excited to introduce you to Candace York. Candace is a friend of mine and I first knew her personally and now I've been able to get to know her professionally and wow, what a firecracker she is. Candace, welcome. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, so let, let's tell the audience, where do you work and what's, what's your title, what do you do there? I currently work at Bear Paint Company and I am Director of Talent and Organizational Effectiveness. It just started January 2nd. Right, this is new for you. <laughs> yeah. Yay. It is, and it's a wonderful opportunity to create that function. And so I just jumped at it. So when you say create, that means that you it's a new position there. It's an entirely new function. Wow, that's exciting. That's very exciting. So you know one of the things that I want to start asking you about, Candice, is as you decided to choose a career, um, your job is to build talent. What made you decide that you wanted to do that? What, what was it uh, about yourself that you said, you know what, I want to help other people expand beyond their, what they even think their potential is? I, I am so blessed to have found this field. I am an industrial organizational psychologist by training, and so I use that training in the field of talent and organizational effectiveness. What I especially love about the field is just the diversity of things that you can do. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of fulfillment from that, um, whether it's looking at the business strategy and really figuring out how can we bring in people with the right capabilities, how can we develop people to make sure that we have a steady flow of talent you know, in our leadership pipeline? How can we leverage the talent that we actually mm -hmm. have and mm -hmm. engage them and retain them? Mm -hmm. um, I love going in to consult with different departments and figuring out what is their, their problem, their, their actual challenge, and designing a really practical solution that they can get behind. Okay. And then there's the coaching component of what I do. So right. there's a lot of diversity. It keeps me challenged mm -hmm. and, and really fulfilled. So I was curious about that because you describe yourself as a leader mm -hmm. and as a consultant and as a coach. So for the people who are watching, they might be deciding that this is an industry that they want to go into and or they want to be able to get more help from the company that they work with. So help us understand what's the differentiate leader, your role as leader, and how other people can relate, coach and consultant. What does that mean? So within my role, I really think of those as the three hats that I wear and I'm constantly juggling those. Okay, at one time um, maybe sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> And so, as a leader, I'm really there to motivate and mobilize people to really drive the strategy to get things done, really, on behalf of the company. So, sometimes I have to do that with my direct team. Okay. Sometimes it's leadership in terms of thought leadership with my clients or with my peers. Okay. And so that's what I mean by being a leader in that sense. Sometimes I have to lead my superiors. Right. Oh, you know. <laughs> There's that too. Le leading up, it's, it's an important skill. To you learn. know what? Leading up is a big skill that people tell me that they want more help in. It's like not only leading the people who might report to them and leading their peers. Mm -hmm. what, what's your advice on that? How, how can people go about doing that? You know, a big part of it, I think, is influence. Okay. And you really, whether actually, whether it's leading up or leading across, you really have to figure out what are the actual interests and mm. needs of the people that you're mm. trying to persuade. And you've got to let go of ego. It's not about mm. you and it's not about being right. Mm. It's about what is important to the, the person that you're trying to influence. You're not gonna get very far if you come across and you try to hammer things home, well, this is what we need to do, and I have all this data, and data is great, but sometimes people need to have a burning platform. Right. They need to be feeling some pain around an issue for them to do something. So oh. sometimes, <laughs> you know, when you try to propose something and it's not taken, sometimes the right thing is to push, but sometimes it's not because the issue isn't what I would say, ripe yet, right, right, you know, right. in their mind. So it's really figuring out what is it that this other person is interested in? Um, what are the things that keep them up at night? What are their pain points, their challenges? Become intimately familiar with that. Start with a relationship. Okay. Then you okay. can propose solutions or recommendations that tap into that. Okay. That's going to get you far. So what I heard you say is 
don't worry so much about the task at hand, but work first on the relationship. Ask people what's important to them and listen to what they say. And then we have a dialogue. In other words, commonalities, right? Understanding what you have in common with people. And it sounds like you're also saying, understand what you can learn from them. Like you might not have all the answers. The other person, if you ask them questions, you'll probably learn something from them. Right, and I see my role as really adding value. Okay. So it's not just about what I want to do, or what go. I think should be right. done, or what I've done it's in not the past, all about and I you. know what works. Exactly. Yeah. It's creating value for my clients. So I need to get aligned with what are their actual needs okay. and interests. And okay. that's the way that you gain credibility. Absolutely. And that you're able to, to push forward Absolutely. an agenda that, that really brings business results. You know what, interestingly enough, when you said the word credibility, I was listening to a podcast recently and and this was interesting the person said people think that when they start building credibility that they've done it okay so I've got this I'm good I'm good I'm credible and the reality is that it's a work in progress you agree with that I would and I think that credibility is all part of of trust yes you know it's it's part of doing what you say you're gonna do you following know. through how about that <laughs> exactly following through um showing people that you're well-intentioned you have their best interests at heart um and not do it. you know double talking you know saying one thing or misleading people but really you know you have other intentions so it's really showing people that you know they can believe what mm -hmm. you say and they can trust you to follow through. that's big that's i that know when big. i've been in the corporate world the people who did what they said they were going to do are the people who I wanted to continue to associate with. Yeah. I want to switch gears here a little bit because people who are watching might be trying to figure out how to advance. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to figure out, you know, I've been here for a few years. I want to get a promotion. I haven't seen other pro people promoted. And they're trying to figure out how to break through what we call, you know, that glass ceiling. Yeah. So what kind of advice can you give, Candace, about the person who's watching? And, you know, what can they do? Well, I'm still knocking on that glass ceiling. <laughs> well, you but, do a good job but... busting through. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say what's been really helpful to me to advance is, um, first of all, having resilience mm. you know having the resilience of an infant or toddler really you know i i have, a, you toddler. have a toddler i do i do <laughs> and i've been learning from her you know <laughs> i've seen her you know trying to crawl and you know she would start off by scooching or really struggling to get up to take her first step and she'd get knocked down she'd still get up again so it's having that kind of resilience and i think the thing that really fuels resilience for me is not dwelling on the negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a natural place to go when things don't go exactly how you'd like. But I, I sort of change the talk. I ask myself constructive questions. Okay, like so, what? So if something didn't go as well as I would have liked, I say, okay, well, that happened. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I think about, okay, well, exactly what didn't I like? For the person who's watching, they're trying to figure out how they can advance. You know, what is it that they need to do to break through what we call the glass ceiling? Um, and, and you've done that. So what kind of advice would you, and you help other people do that. That's what, that's what you do. So what kind of advice do you have for people who are watching, like, I got to do something different. I'm ready to get a promotion. Um, what, what kind of advice do you have? I'd say one key thing is to have resilience. Okay. And resilience, that's a big one. Yeah, it's big. I, I think about my, my toddler and mm -hmm. I think about the different stages that she went through, the crawling, okay. trying to get up and walk. Mm -hmm. Now she's trying to get out of her crib. Oh. <laughs> she she persists. She just has this resilience. <laughs> and so it's like that. And what I use to fuel that kind of resilience is to really put aside all the negative self-talk. It's very easy to, to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. And instead, I ask myself questions that are more constructive okay. and that open up more possibilities like so, what? what's an example of a question that you ask yourself yeah so if if something didn't go well with a presentation or maybe I was in a meeting with a client and mm -hmm. I felt like I just wasn't doing a good job mm -hmm. of, of getting my points across then I'll ask you know what 
what happened there? Okay. And what could I do differently going forward? Okay. And I actually think about preparation differently now. Mm. Uh, a few years ago, I had a leadership coach, and through that coaching engagement, it got me to see that preparation is really not just about having your facts together and making sure your deck is fine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really also about thinking, you know, how do I want to show up? What kind of impression do I want to make? What do I want to leave people with? Mm. And actually going a step beyond that and visualizing it. Mm. Oh. So as I'm doing this presentation, I have to see that. I have to see the reactions you know, in my mind okay. on the faces. I have okay. to see what it is I'm trying to get across okay. and how I want them to react. Okay. And I've found that to be incredibly helpful. Awesome. So that's a practice that I that I do. So that's uh, that's great. And so just to recap, because you just said a lot. <laughs> so I want to start with the resilience. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Um, and I love the example, the analogy of your toddler who's so adorable. Because many times we think we did something and we're supposed to automatically run to the next thing. So thinking about learning to crawl, then taking the steps. And, and then getting and then walking and then running. So I think that for the people who are watching, take a look at what you've done. What stage are you in? And the other thing I heard you say was that's important is reflection. Mm -hmm. That once you've been in the situation, you reflect. Absolutely. And you know what I find, Candace, when I work with people is we're so busy running from one thing to the next. Are you guys guilty of that? Because we don't take time to reflect. So. Do you have some suggestions? What does a person need to do to take the time and have that honest conversation with ourselves? Yeah. You've got to make it a habit. Just there make it a make regular it a practice. Maybe yeah. it's every night or maybe it's every morning. You know, one thing in the broader sphere of things is that to me, I think we need to think of ourselves as whole people. So mm -hmm. I know we're trying to, you know, bust through that glass ceiling, mm -hmm. but if we're only working, then mm -hmm. I think that can lead to burnout really fast. So something that I learned probably about 13 years ago was to think about the different facets of my life. I read a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway oh, yeah, by Susan Jeffers. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I took away from that book was a whole life grid. So think of a large square, and that square is made up of smaller boxes. There are nine. But think of your life in facets. So family, okay. maybe your financial affairs, right. personal, whatever that is for you. And so I've been doing that, and that allows me to feel whole mm -hmm. and not to feel dissatisfied. Okay. And so now <laughs> there's me time. And that's that's the important. Okay. That's important. And so when I think about the fact that, you know, I'm a wife, you know, I yeah. am a More mother. Has. There has to be me time, right. another box is couple time. That, that's important. And then another box is family time. And if me time doesn't happen, couple and family time, they don't go very well. <laughs> I'll give you a really quick joke. Okay. <laughs> I was feeling a little bit burned out last year, a little bit, because I had taken on two roles. Uh, and right, so, right, you know, right. I was struggling to really feel whole. And so I knew I needed to get some me time in. And my husband was feeling the same. And so we were having a conversation, and then he casually mentioned that he was taking a particular day off. And then I, I said, wait, what? That, I was going to take that day off. And then we both had this horrified look on our faces <laughs> that we would be in each other's way. And so we quickly rescheduled so that we could each have our own me time. So <laughs> That is a funny story because you didn't want anything to interfere with that me time. You Not wanted the husband or the, or the wife. <laughs> Very that's a serious funny story. about me time. Oh, that's awesome. That, so and, that's a good lesson. And so in me time, that's when you can build in your periods of reflection and really assessing where you are. Exactly. Can you believe that we're almost out of time? That That's time enough. went so fast. So I you know what? Up. I know. So we're gonna have to do another. We're gonna have to do make a part two. So we want to thank you guys for tuning in to Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Beauchamp, and we'll see you next time.